Toastmasters and welcome guests. The date was Tuesday, March 25th of 2008. That evening, I went home and wrote the following journal entry. Wow, I attended a meeting of the Austin Toastmasters today. I had no clue what to expect. I got there at 6 p.m. and it was awesome. What a great group of people. Okay, to the point. I talk to myself like that. <laughs> One of the speakers named Scotty talked about the structure of the group. It's certainly about public speaking, but it's also about leadership. Then he said, and I quote, at Toastmasters, you get out of it as much as you put into it. It is such a simple but powerful statement. I had never heard it, but I totally dig it. Smiley face. I signed up and became a member the following meeting. I quickly started speaking and signed up for supporting roles as well. The club became for me what I like to call a big pink bubble. When I'm in my bubble, I am completely comfortable. The environment, as you can see in here, is extremely positive. But not only that, the synergy amongst all of us is vibrant. I have a lot of fun. I learn a lot. And you know what? There is a common goal that we all share. And that goal is that we all listen attentively and then we provide very sensible, very sensitive, and supporting feedback, constructive criticism that help us all reach our goals. As I was growing up, order and discipline were king and queen in the Escalante household. My parents were not just strict, they were very, very, very strict. As a result of that, from a very young age, I became this little perfectionist overachiever. I had to perform well always. And I am not proud of this. I am not happy. Life has certainly slapped me a couple of times to get me to snap out of that mode. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I was never able to take instructive criticism well. No matter how constructive, it was just not the right thing for me. Eventually, I learned to what I thought was accepting it. The truth is I was tolerating it, but not accepting it. I had put on top of my very thick skin an invisible bulletproof armor that helped me fend off all that criticism. Well, flashback again to last year. Not until I joined Toastmasters did I realize the enormous value and the true potential of constructive feedback. And you wanna know when exactly I realized that? Do you remember that speech that I did that evening around election date where I put together a PowerPoint and it had a checklist of all those attributes as to why you should vote for me and not vote for some other of the candidates? Well, some of you may know what I'm talking about, some of you may not. But at the end of that speech, Scotty was my evaluator. And Chuck, who is my mentor, was evaluating me too. Let me read to you their exact words. Scotty wrote, and I quote, well written, delivered with fun, smoothest visual aids ever, best I've seen in Toastmasters. But it gets better. Chuck wrote, I don't have any critiques of such a delightful speech. My jaw dropped. Here are two members of Toastmasters that are very seasoned, very senior members, very experienced, and they're telling me that I rock. All right. But you know what? As I was sitting on this chair, I kept thinking, guys, you're awesome. Thank you. This is so cool. But don't just tell me that I did well. Tell me how can I improve? I want more. I want more. 
And that's the moment when I realized that there had been a paradigm shift in my brain and I had come not to just like, but to crave that constructive criticism. And it was thanks to Toastmasters. Now, I, like I said, not only want it or receive it when given to me, I request it from my mom, from my dad, from my family, from my friends, from my mentors, my peers, colleagues, anybody. I welcome it. It has been such a wonderful change in my mind. It has led me through this path of growth, of personal growth and development, because now I see it as a very positive and loving, helpful assistance to help me reach my goals. Another turning point for me in Toastmasters was back in December. Unbeknownst to Tony O'Neill, for those who don't know her, pulled me aside after a meeting and said, hey, I've been talking to some of the Toastmasters, and guess what? Your name has been nominated for president over the next term. What? Oh my God. I was well, speechless. Now, if you know me, that's kind of a hard point to reach, really. <laughs> the truth is that the biggest, greatest, and most wonderful gift that anyone could ever give me is their trust. The fact that some of you members had thought of me to entrust me with the leadership of this group It really made my heart jump of joy and it humbled me down to my knees. After that, the best part is that I started looking around at all these wonderful members that I have here and I thought, you know, I remember hearing what Scotty said and the group feels the same way that I do. So this leads me to believe that as he kept saying, you get out of this as much as you put into it, you were absolutely deadly wrong. And you know why? Because my fellow Toastmasters, I have gotten immensely and immeasurably more out of this group than I could ever put into it. I am thrilled to be here tonight speaking, giving my 10th speech. This is absolutely wonderful. But you know what? It's not only me. I've heard from some of the other members, and I think the feeling is pretty unanimous all across the board. You all feel the same way about the way in which the club has rewarded you personally. So tonight, this evening, I want to propose that we all join in bringing the club to the next level. And what I mean by that is something very, very simple. I want to propose to start a tradition. From now on, let's make a charitable contribution to the charity of our choice in the name of the Austin Toastmasters. Let's leave a lasting legacy. Don't let the legacy of the group just stay here with us. Let's bring it out to the community. Let's put more Austin into the Austin Toastmasters. Who wants to follow? Who wants to follow? Awesome, <laughs> let's, oh my God, I see a dollar in the room. Let's go ahead and put the dollar into the piggy, please. My fellow Toastmasters, I think we are, in the words of our area governor, an Uber club. We definitely can leave a legacy that will be for generations to come when we may still be here or may not. And in the words of Sherry, let's measure this not by our ego, but what we can really, really do and the impact that we can really have. Please come next week to the business meeting so that we can decide what kind of charity we want and what kind of lasting legacy we want to leave. May I please count on your support to make this happen. Mr. Toastmaster.